the names are world famous. Leonard Skinner, the Allman Brothers Band, 38 Special, Molly Hatchet. Just a few of the Southern rock bands that got their start here in Jacksonville. Tom Wills is joining us too. And Tom, our Southern rock roots, they really run deep. Kent Mary, I think those roots run deeper than many people think. As our city celebrates its bicentennial tonight, we have a look at this unique style of rock and roll that emerged here in Jacksonville almost 60 years ago and endures and thrives today. At that time, we would play outdoor shows mm -hmm. uh, around Jacksonville, mm -hmm. and one of them was right here at Friendship Park. Leonard Skinner guitarist Ricky Medlock joined me in this iconic South Bank Park was, uh, so he could reminisce about an event here 50 years ago. He's been playing and singing with Jacksonville's legendary Southern rock band for the past 26 years. It's his second stint with the group. He also played with the band in the early 70s. Right over my shoulder, I used to sit on a set of drums with the original guys, and that's where we played, sometimes on a Sunday, here down, at Friendship down Park. here at Friendship Park. Never before seen on TV, this 8 millimeter silent film from 1972, when Medlock and the founding members of Leonard Skinner put on one of their free concerts when the band was just getting started. It was filmed by one of the guitar players, Randall Hall. Also recalling those early days, Skinner's first manager, Pat Armstrong, who remembers hearing the band for the very first time when they played another free outdoor concert. What I saw that was different was that there was a crowd of about 2,000 kids that came to see him. And the band that had played before him had about 200 kids in attendance. And after they left, all of a sudden, they were down to 200 again. It was obvious to me that they had a name and a reputation in Jacksonville that needed to be shared with the rest of the world. If I leave Skinner became world famous, both before the tragic plane crash in 1977, and again when the band reformed 10 years later with Ronnie Van Zandt's younger brother Johnny as the new lead singer. The middle Van Zandt brother, Donnie, also became a rock star with his southern rock band, 38 Special. This West Side house where all three grew up is now preserved. It's an Airbnb with an historical marker along Woodcrest Road. The Van Zandts aren't the only southern rock legends with a historical roadside marker here in Jacksonville. The Allman Brothers have one too, right here along Riverside Avenue. It's in front of a private home called the Gray House. The current owner told me the story how one day several young musicians, including Dwayne Allman, were jamming in the living room. When they got through playing, he blocked the door and said something to the effect of, if you don't want to be in my band, you're going to have to fight your way out. There's also a story about how one of the band's most famous songs was written by Greg Allman. Whipping Post was written in here. While he was here, supposedly he wrote most of the songs on the first album, if they're the Allman Brothers songs, some of them were other people's songs. But Whipping Post, he didn't have anything to write with, so he lit matches and used the, the charcoal on an ironing board to write Whipping Post. The Allman Brothers and Leonard Skinner were in effect the trailblazers for a host of Southern rock bands from Jacksonville. This is Michael Ray Fitzgerald's list from his book. Allman Brothers Band, Cowboy, Leonard Skinner, Blackfoot, 38 Special, Molly Hatchet, Alias, Johnny Van Zant Band, The Rossington Collins Band, The Allen Collins Band, Derek Trucks, Mofro. Why Jacksonville? Oh my God. Uh, a lot of people have pondered over this question. I think one of the primary reasons was because it's such a blue collar town and these young people didn't want cruddy day jobs and they were determined to get out of that grind and do something more fun and more stimulating with their lives. Seemed all this talent was here and it came out of Jacksonville and nobody can really pinpoint accurately why that is, but I always said, 
Hey, it's something in the water, man. We had great water. <laughs> How is Southern Rock different from other rock? You know what? I always said that our brand of rock music was really born out of the blues. And I listened to Mississippi John Hurt and Lead Belly and people like that. The Allman Brothers love the blues. I mean, to me, Southern rock was really born out of the blues and a little bit of country thrown in there. That influence of African-American blues brings us here to La Villa and another part of Jacksonville's rich musical history, including the Ritz Theater, which opened in 1929. This part of town grew into what some call the Harlem of the South. Others, however, say that Harlem was the La Villa of the North. The blues history goes back even further. In 1910, Jacksonville actually becomes known as uh, the first place that is documented where the blues was performed live on a public stage. If we go back to the 1900s, we had African-American performers who were also performing for um, white individuals in town. Music has been Ricky Medlock's life since he was a child. He appeared with his grandfather, Bluegrass star Shorty Medlock, on a TV show, Toby Dowdy's Country Frolics, here on Channel 4 in the early 1950s. His grandfather taught him to play that miniature banjo. Decades later, he's still playing. Ricky, you're a rock and roll pioneer. So many of the other rock and roll pioneers are gone, some of them, for a long time. Do you ever reflect on that? Lost a lot of my brothers in this business. Do I miss those people? Yeah, I miss them. And uh, do I think about them every night? Every night of my life uh, that I'm standing on that stage and I'm playing that guitar? Yes, I think about them. And I hope uh, it, when I see them again one day and I get there, I hope I don't get a punch in the face because I didn't do a good job. <laughs> I, hope, I hope I get a handshake, a hug, you know what I mean? But uh, I've always been willing to take my licks. I'm all right. I'm from the west side. <laughs> oh, I'm from the west side. Oh my gosh, he's gonna get a big old hug, and I can't get over the little banjo to that yeah. incredible guitar. Yeah, the the history here, Tom, is just it's amazing to me. And if somebody uh, like me didn't grow up in this area, you wouldn't know. And then you hear these stories, and you go, I love this even more, right? You know, those words of Ricky's, I'm from the West Side, I believe they <laughs> reflect the essence of Southern rock and roll and why it is so popular, the songs, why they touch all of us. They capture the every man and the every woman that is inside each of us. Boy, that's yeah. absolutely it. You know, it's, uh, so many of the fans of this music, they weren't even born when these songs were being written. Right. Kent, I saw that in St. Augustine when they played in St. Augustine uh, in recent years. I saw that again at... TIAA Bank Field, which will always be the Gator Bowl for sure. me, those young, <laughs> young fans. Even more remarkable, I saw it when I went to Gillsburg, Mississippi in 2019 for the dedication of this monument near the scene of the 1977 crash. It was the first time I'd been there since I covered that crash in those Mississippi woods now almost 45 years ago. Now look at this picture. This is on the back of the monument. You'll see it again in a moment. It really is poignant. You saw the smiling band members in front of the plane. Ronnie Van Zant, Steve and Cassie Gaines, they died. So did road manager Dean Kilpatrick. Oh, gosh. So young, the pilot and co-pilot were also killed. If you look closely, there's luggage in the foreground of this picture. I saw that luggage broken open, scattered in the woods next to the wrecked plane the day after the crash. I've never forgotten that site, I can imagine. their personal belongings scattered in the woods. Oh it's gosh, just it so personal. Takes your breath away. That must have been just incredible then to see that in that photograph. What, Leonard Skinner though, how are they doing now? Yeah, you know, they're playing on, okay, they're wow. touring. Ricky told me they're playing makeup dates for the concerts that they had to cancel oh. during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. They'll be in Tampa this Saturday night. Mm -hmm. They played three dates in California during the month of May. They'll be in Charlotte Sunday night. And you know, they're not the only rock band from Jacksonville out there playing. A fan who lives in the Netherlands and emails me from time to time, his name is Lambert Kloosterman. He told me that he and his son are looking forward to seeing Molly Hatchett later this year in Hamburg, Germany. Uh, Hatchett will be in Sandusky, Ohio 
Memorial Day weekend. Oh getting around. God. The Southern yeah. roots just living on. <laughs> that's yeah. incredible, Tom. That's, you know, I, I had so much fun doing this story. Ricky Medlock is a See, joy to interview. He He's seemed incredible. like a lot of fun. Incredible. Yeah. The heart and soul of it, it seemed like. Remember, he got his start here on Channel 4 when we were WMBR, okay? Right. And he's here with Grandpa. With the little banjo. <laughs> Thank you so Classic. much, Tom.